गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू आर मैथ्स वन ऑनलाइन टीचिंग सेशन लेट अस कंटिन्यू विद अ फोर्थ चैप्टर दैट इज रेशियो एंड प्रोपोर्शन व्हिच वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड टुडे वी विल स्टार्ट विद पार्ट फोर इन द प्रीवियस सेशन आई हैव टॉट यू फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ इक्वल रेशियो लेट अस क्विकली रीकैप दैट यस और रिवाइज इट यू रिमेंबर दोस प्रॉपर्टीज व्हिच वेयर दोस फाइव प्रॉपर्टीज व्हिच आई हैव टोल्ड यू दे वेयर Yes, alternando, invertendo, componendo, dividendo, and componendo dividendo. Yes, I know these are new terms, but I have explained you these properties in the previous slide. Let us start further in the practice set which we have already started. That is practice set four point three. Let us start with the second sum. The question is fifteen a square plus four b square. Upon fifteen a square minus four b square is equal to forty seven upon seven. Then find the values of following ratios. Now I have told you this in the previous uh, session also that this type of questions have many sub questions in it. Okay, so one by one we will solve it. This is what is given. Let's see what is the first question. The first question is to find a upon b. Now why it is different from the previous sum which we have done in the previous slide? See, this is a upon b. They have not given us any value of a upon b in the previous question. That is question number one. Just turn the pages and see which we have done in the previous session. Just turn if you have written and see there a upon b was given and different values were asked. In this question, they have given a equation form and they are asking us the value of the basic ratio that is a upon b. Okay, the first thing to remember, whenever the basic ratio a upon b is asked. Whatever is a given question, always you have to do componendo, dividendo as your first step. Okay, always this should be the first step when when this ratio a upon b or m upon n or p upon q is asked. Always from an equation, if such questions are asked, if equation is given and p upon q is asked, equation is given in this form and a upon b is asked, then always the first step is to use componendo, dividendo. This is a clue to remember. Now I have told you what is componendo dividendo. Let us quickly revise the property. If I have equal ratio a upon b, that is equal to c upon b. Now I want to use componendo dividendo. What am I supposed to do? A and a. I am writing it two times. Yes. Do not get afraid. I'll tell you what I am doing. C and c. I am writing it two times. Correct. Once I will add the denominator. Once I will subtract the denominator. So this is a plus b, a minus b. So I am not writing here b minus a. That is the reason I wrote a and a twice. Okay. Then what I did? Once I added the numerator, then I denominator, and then I subtracted the denominator. See here also to right hand side. I have written the numerator twice, c and c. Now what I will do? Once I will add the denominator, and once I will subtract the denominator. I hope you have recollected this property of component or dividend or. Now let us use it here. See the equation. Do not get afraid by seeing this bigger equation. It is not at all difficult. It may be lengthy, I agree, but it is not difficult. Try to do it along with me. As I am telling you the steps, you will understand it. Trust me. Try to do it along with me. See, this is the basic equation given to us, right? So now I want to use component or dividend. What I have told you just now. See, this is the numerator part, and this is the denominator part. What you do is. You write this numerator twice. See, fifteen a square plus four b square, fifteen a square plus four b square. Okay, I've written the numerator twice. Now what I will do? I'll take this denominator. What is that? Fifteen a square minus four b square. See, I've written that also twice. Fifteen a square minus four b square, fifteen a square minus four b square. But important thing: once you add it and once you subtract it. I hope you are understanding it. It is a. Plus b, again a minus b. A is written first. That is numerator. See, fifteen a square plus four b square, fifteen a square plus four b square. Then plus and minus. This is what I was explaining you here. And then the denominator is written twice. So denominator is written twice. It means fifteen a square minus four b square, fifteen a square minus four b square, with a plus and minus sign in between. See this. There is a plus and minus sign in between. Correct. Now same thing is to be followed to the other side also. It is forty-seven upon seven. So I am going to do forty-seven and forty-seven two times. I am writing it. 
then I will add the new denominator and I will subtract the denominator. See this. Okay. I am not doing it as 7 minus 47. Write numerator twice. Then write denominator twice. Once add and once subtract. This is what is to be done. Okay. After this step, what is to be done? You just have to open the bracket. Don't do anything else other than opening the bracket. So when there is a plus sign, no signs will change. It will come as it is. But when there is a minus sign, I hope you know. When bracket is open, sign will change. So this will become minus 15 a square. And this minus into minus will become plus. So this will become plus 4 b square. Okay. We are just opening the bracket in this step. And simplifying this. 47 plus 7 is 54. 47 minus 7 is 40. I hope you understood this step. After this what? Cancel the plus and minus term. Plus 4. Not up and down. Many start cancelling from numerator and denominator. It is an expression in the numerator. You cannot cancel numerator and denominator. But from numerator if there is any plus or minus sign you can cancel. So plus 4b square minus 4b square from numerator is cancelled. Look at the denominator and you cancel it now what can be done? Yes, I hope you must have done it. This minus 15 and plus 15 can be cancelled from the denominator. Correct? Now what? 15a square, 15a square, they are like terms. So 15 plus 15, 30a square. Plus 4b and plus 4b, they are again like terms. So plus 8b square. I hope this is understood how we are getting it. Yes, it is 15 plus 15, 30 and 4 plus 4, 8, 8b square. Okay, is equal to 54 upon 40. Now, one concept I want you to understand that when I want to shift a fraction from one side to the other side, what is to be done? When a fraction as it is, is to be shifted to the other side. See, this is what I have on the other side. And I want to shift the fraction. I need to take the reciprocal of it. I hope you know what is reciprocal. Reciprocal means I need to take 8 upon 30 to the other side. Remember this very important property. That when a fraction is shifted from one side to the other side, you need, you need to take the reciprocal of the fraction and multiply. See how it is done here. This is what we had in the previous slide. I have told you. Now I want to shift this fraction from this side to the other side. So I will take the reciprocal from this side and take it to the other side and multiply. So it will become into 8 upon 30. Don't start wondering from where this 8 upon 30 came. I am shifting this fraction from year to year. So I am taking the reciprocal of it. Okay. So it will become 8 upon 40, 30. Okay. Now let's see what can be cancelled. Think about the factors. 8 ones are 8 fives are. Correct. Then 6 nines are and 6 fives are 30. What is left is 9 upon 5 fives are 25. I hope you understood the cancellation. Okay. So a square upon b square is 9 upon 25. Taking square root on both sides, we will get a upon b as 3 upon 5. I am ignoring the negative part. When we take the square root, we take plus or minus. Correct? So in this sum, I am ignoring the negative part. I am taking only the positive ratio. So a upon b is 3 upon 5. This is my first part of the answer. They asked us the value of a upon b. So a upon b is nothing but 3 upon 5. Okay. So I hope you understood this. Now what are we are going to do is using this ratio, a upon b as 3 upon 5, we will be solving the remaining part of the questions that they are asking in this. See the second one. It is easy now. You just can't tell me that it is difficult. If this type of sums we have done. See a upon b is 3 upon 5. From where? From 1. We have done it, right? Question is 7a minus 3b and 7a plus 3b, right? So what we will do? First, we will try to get this coefficient, see this 7 and this 3. So I will multiply both the sides by 7 upon 3. Why only 7 upon 3? I have told you, look at the coefficient of a and coefficient of b. Coefficient of a is 7, coefficient of b is 3. That is the reason why both the sides we are multiplying by 7 upon 3. So this will be 7 into a is 7a, 3 into b is 3b and here 3 and 3 can be cancelled. 7 upon 5. See this. We have got 7 upon 5. So now, first what we will do is, we will get component or dividend. Add and subtract. How will you come to know? 
see even though it is having a minus sign up this question main question plus sign below but what is done is plus and minus so you know this property only you don't know any property where minus and plus is used component or dividend only plus and minus is used correct so use component or dividend what you will get is 7a plus 3b 7a minus 3b same way here what i need to do is it is 7 upon 5 correct so what i need to do when i use component or dividend 7 i need to write two times add the denominator plus 5 subtract the denominator minus 5 correct so it will become 7 plus 5 7 minus 5 7 plus 5 is 12 7 minus 5 is 2 so 12 upon 2 which can be written as 6 upon 1 okay now we have got it as 6 upon 1 now look at the question the question is having minus sign up and plus sign below so what you do is you invert this which property invert endo when i invert left hand side i have to invert the right hand side as well so when i invert it will become 7a minus 3b upon 7a plus 3b and this 6 upon 1 will get inverted to 1 upon 6 just invert it okay by inverting you need to specify this property here and you will get the answer in which the question is asked i hope you understand why we are inverting because the question is asked like that it is having minus sign above and plus sign below so once i use component or dividend i'll just invert it to get the final answer okay see the third part now if you understand the third part fourth part will be easy for you you know the value of a upon b i'll first explain all the steps correct look at the form of a and b it is not a and b it is in fact a square and b square that is the reason i will be first squaring it right now then look at the these are step wise to be done you understand the steps let me give you any sum of this you will find it easy what is the first step again i am repeating you you know the value of a upon b right now looking at the question you decide the steps in your mind first step is look at the form of a and b it is a square and b square so i need to square it that is my first step right then what do you do look at the coefficient of a and b a is having coefficient 2 and b is having no coefficient means 1 so both the sides i need to multiply by 2 upon 1 nobody is telling me i am doing it on my own correct or this is one way of doing it see the way i have solved here since this is b square it is starting with b square correct so i will get the term b square above a square below by using inverted view. you can do by this method also and then invert it or you can in, uh, initially only invert and then square and then multiply by one upon two absolutely your choice both methods are right okay now see how it can is done here a upon b we have got square on both sides a square upon b square 9 upon 25 now since this is starting with b square it is not starting with a square we will invert it so we'll get b square upon a square 9 square 9 we have already done we are inverting it so it will be 25 upon 9 okay after this what look at the coefficients of b and a b square is having 1 a square is having 2 correct so both the sides i will multiply by 1 upon 2 why 1 upon 2 see this is 2a square so i will get 2a square that is the reason both the sides we are multiplying by 1 upon 2 i hope you have understood each and every step step wise you have to first only think in your mind what is to be done and then accordingly solve now see this b square upon 2a square is equal to 25 upon 18 we have got now in the question it was plus and minus so what which property to be used component or dividend so plus and minus so this also will be 25 plus 18 and 25 minus 18 this is as easy as component of dividend so 25 plus 18 is 43 25 minus 18 is 7 so we have got the answer in this form correct as in the previous sum this sum also they have minus sign above so what is left is by invert and row just invert it so this will go up and plus will come down and same way here 43 will go down and 7 will come up so b square minus 2a square upon b square plus 2a square is nothing but 7 is to 43 again i am telling you looking at the question you are going to decide the step why i need to invert this because the question is having minus up and plus down why i need to take the square because it is a square and b square why i need to multiply by 1 upon 2 because a square is having 2 b square is having 1 
okay so looking at the question you decide the steps if you have understood this next sum i would really like you to try and once you have done it then check it from here it is absolutely similar and easy also see a upon b is given as 3 upon 5 what is the question asked they have asked this question b cube plus 2 or uh, plus 2 a cube upon b cube minus 2 a cube so what should be my next step in the question the variables are in the form of cube in the previous slide i have told you they are in the form of square so i took squaring on both side since now they are in the form of cube i will take cubing on both side this is what i am telling you nobody can tell you any formula for this type of sums this type of sums you have to see the question decide your steps on your own question is having the variable in cube form so cubing should be your first step so a cube upon b cube 3 cube is 127 upon 125 this is done this question also is going to start with b cube so as i done i have done in the previous slide i will invert it here also okay so this inverting i will get by invert and of b cube upon a cube is equal to 125 upon 27 okay same step i am telling you again and again look at the coefficient of a cube 2 coefficient of b cube is 1 so i'll multiply both the sides by 1 upon 2 as we have done in the previous question okay so multiplying what we will get 125 upon 27 into 2 is 54 now since this is plus and minus which property to use component of dividend correct by component of dividend 125 plus 54 125 minus 54 right so after this simplify it it will be 179 upon 71 okay but looking at the question the question is in the form of minus plus so again the same thing invert and row see both the questions 3 and 4 are same there it was square here it is cube all the steps are same yes take the square first in this sum take the cube first then multiply by 1 upon 2 multiply by 1 upon 2 then you need to take component or dividend row and finally invert and row so the final answer is b cube minus 2a cube upon b cube plus 2a cube is equal to 71 is to 179 okay so try these two sums i hope you are understanding it now next question is this i have given you this as homework sum homework because look at this i'll discuss it with you it is 3a plus 7b upon 3a minus 7b is equal to 4 upon 3 correct now these sums i told you if they are asking you to find a upon b always now in this question they are not asking you a upon b but they are asking you this in order to get this value you need the value of a upon b yes or no so what you will do as your first step by component or dividend so by component or dividend you will get the value of a upon b okay now once you get the value of a upon b okay look at the question and decide the steps looking at the question the first step is a and b is in the form of squares so what you will do squaring on both sides this will become a square b square look at the coefficient of a square and b square it is 3 and 7 so both the sides you will multiply by 3 upon 7 i hope everybody is understanding these steps so after this what it is in the form of plus and minus right so you use component of dividend but look here final question is having minus above yes so what we will do as our last step invert and row this is what i was telling you similar type of sums these are they are lengthy i agree but if you try to understand it orally like this 100 percent you will not understand it solve as many times as you can definitely you will understand okay so the, this way you will complete this okay and question number four i am omitting it because it is having many sub questions and we are running short of time i don't want to do this difficult sums in a hurry so question number four is omitted you have to solve this question number three as homework okay so with this we come to the end of this session and end of this practice set remaining sums will continue in the next session try to complete till here okay thank you